Okay, we're back. Let's talk to Vern a bit more about his sister and how crazy she was, or... Vern, I was just talking to William Forrest. He showed me a model of the project he hoped to build on Susan's property that he kept in hopes you would sell the house to him. William did make me an offer to buy the place when Susan was declared dead. But after thinking it over, I knew that selling it to the library is what she really would have wanted. About the treasure Susan mentioned, Morris suggested that by treasure, she meant the value of the property. Hmm. Maybe. I'm not really sure. The property certainly is valuable, but so are the materials used in the house. It dates back to the early 19th century. Ooh. That's very impressive. How did you learn this? I think it was in one of the letters I received about Susan's house recently. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. So it doesn't seem like Vern's a suspect anymore because, you know, he seriously didn't know. Where is that last letter? I mean, I had a big itch. pretty good reason for wanting that uh, house. You know, the materials were really valuable. I wonder if the uh, library will make a deal with Lamar saying, you know, okay, you can have the materials in the house and sell them, but you have to donate a few pieces, well, not a few, a bit, a few bucks to the library itself and, you know, maybe take the books out of there so they would be part of the library. That's just my thought, though. This letter was from Chris Lamar. Is he the one who told you about the value of the building materials? Yes. He approached me about buying the property, or at least the rights to deconstruct the house and remove anything that could be reused. With so much interest in Susan's house, I'd better check it first thing in the morning to make sure nothing has been disturbed. Good idea. That's odd. The front door was unlocked. It's not like the sheriff to leave a crime scene unsecured. I'd best call him. I think someone else may have been here last night. Uh-oh, somebody disturbed the crime scene. You're not supposed to do that. Oh, sneeze. Wow.
This also means somebody had a pair of keys to Susan's house. And I don't think Fern had a spare set. Pretty sure William didn't. I'm very sure Chris Lamar didn't. And the only set of keys Vern had, he gave to Jessica unless he made a copy. Which I don't think he did. Maybe one more of each. Hmm. There's the handprint. There's the footprint. Yay! What do you see, Sheriff? There's some fresh damage here by the fireplace, like someone hastily used some tools to remove something. There's only one person I know with an interest in getting as much out of this house as possible before it's demolished. Chris Lamar. Let's head over to the antique shop now. But how could he get in if the door was locked? What brings you two back? How long have you been plundering items out of Susan's empty house? I don't know what you're talking about. Susan's collection of antique crystal is missing. And those tiles you have here, they're identical to the ones missing from around Susan's fireplace. Well, he told you, those were sold to him. All right, you win. I've been taking stuff out of the house and selling it to keep the shop afloat. No one's lived there for two years now. Why should valuable materials just sit there to rot? Is that how you came by the candlestick you sold to William Forrest? No, I found the bill of sale from when I purchased the set a year ago. According to the document, you bought the candlesticks from Morris Niederhammer, along with several other items. Do you still have the other candlestick from the set? I don't remember selling it to anyone, so it must be around here somewhere. Something tells me uh, that is something we need. The match game repeats, repeat, repeats, repeats a third time. It's still, at least it's different objects, you know, there's like some variety to it. The one puzzle I don't really have a fondness for, except for the background doesn't change at all. It's kind of stupid. that one. Where was it? Oh. Oops. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm sorry I'm screwing up so badly. What happens is just as I get into a groove, uh, my husband kind of starts messaging me again. He's terrible at timing at times, but it's not his fault. He doesn't know what I'm doing. Oh, wait, that. Don't touch that one at all. Oh, got that. Oh, you can do that. Okay, that is that. There's the matching candlestick. Oh! We'll need to take that candlestick for our investigation, Mr. Lamar. Go ahead. I have a feeling that either this candlestick or the one William had may be the weapon used to murder Susan. Uh oh. I'll bring both down to the station to have them check for traces. Once we know for sure, I promise to let Vern know. Oh, Vern must be thrilled. Just checking something. So one second. Vern, do you have a moment? Oh I'm sorry, Jessica, but Jack Delgado has an emergency on his hands hey, and Robert needs Jack? all the saws I can pull together. Something about some trees down by the school? Let me lend you a hand with that. Remember that name? Jack Delgado? From the previous case? That's kind of a cool little name, drop. I forgot that was in there. That little, you know, that little... Oh, hey, remember this character type of Delia? Seesaw, seesaw. Yeah, we need to do this. Because we're, we're help. I think it, Jessica has kind of an advantage in that she can kind of speed things along and help people so they kind of become a little more cooperative. Kind of like the opposite of Columbo, where he just bugs him to death. Both are legitimate. In fact, uh, if the two of them teamed up to do that, that'd be freaking amazing. Somebody write that story. Or even better, make it a game. I wouldn't mind playing a Columbo game, actually, because I kind of like Columbo a lot, too. Hey, one more thing. One more thing, you know? I liked that. He was an effective detective because the only time he'd do that is if he knew you were lying your ass off. Sorry, I'm just kind of concentrating now. And hoping my back doesn't go scratch on me again.
Okay, where is that last saw? It cannot be that hard to find it. used to use a hint. Oh, there it is. We have news, Vern. We found the murder weapon that killed your sister. You have? What was it? This antique silver candlestick we found for sale in Chris Lamar's shop. There was a trace of Susan's blood on the base. How about fingerprints? The candlestick has been handled so many times by Chris and customers examining it that it was impossible to tell if it ever had the murderer's fingerprints on it. Hold on. Do you still have that candlestick? Sure. There's a tricky way to open them up. Supposed to be for easy cleaning. Maybe there's something inside. Ah. Basically, we have to figure out the pattern. That took me two seconds. I always have trouble. Why is it the stuff I never have trouble with I'm having trouble with and the stuff I always have trouble with I'm not having Burn, any trouble with? You told me earlier that Susan smoked Westminster's? That's right. Then the person who smoked the Ultra Golds is likely her murderer. And who is it in her life that smoked ultra gold? Hmm. Morris, excuse me a moment. Yes, Jessica? We got a hunch that someone may have hidden Susan's collection of crystal nearby. What? I don't see how that would be possible. You're welcome to have a look, though. Meanwhile, all over the place. <laughs> I always found that funny. It's like, we think it's hidden nearby. Cut to this. Yeah, hidden my ass. I knew that was a piece of just a register. That was a cool effect. It was like hidden behind instead of like on top. So it looked like a shadow. That was kind of cool. There's one more piece. There it is. Yay! Morris, I'm afraid we need to talk. Talk? About what? About how you killed Susan Gander two years ago. The crystal you've hidden here confirms it. What? I never... I loved her. We were going to be married. You used one of Susan's candlesticks to bludgeon her to death. The same one you dropped one of your cigarette butts in. Afterwards, you burned Susan's remains. But you didn't think to burn the cigarette butts that proved you were there. You took both candlesticks away with you, and later sold the pair to Chris Lamar. You intended to sell off the crystal, too, but never had the chance. 
You lied when you said that you left the house after you argued over your engagement, didn't you, Morris? Yes, I did. You see, I knew that Susan wasn't making up the story about the treasure in her house. We met here, at the library, and she told me all about it. It was worth a fortune. I never had much money my whole life. Anyway, I became close to her, and convinced her to marry me. But she never trusted me enough to tell me where the treasure was hidden. What happened the night of the argument? I'd pressed Susan to tell me the location of the treasure. That was a mistake. It roused her suspicions, and she called off the relationship. She even threatened to go to the police and have me charged with fraud for tricking her into marrying me. I couldn't let her do that. So you kept her quiet with a candlestick to the head. I was in such a fury. I didn't know what I was doing. Afterwards, afterwards, I was horrified at what I'd done. I had to hide her. Is that when you decided to try and burn her remains? It seemed like the safest thing to do. And to make it look like she had left town, I collected some of her belongings and threw those into the fire as well. Then I bricked up the fireplace so no one would find out what I had done. And the treasure, did you ever find it? No. As far as I know, it's still in that house. Somewhere. But after what I'd done, I never set foot in there again. Sheriff, I keep thinking about that picture of Susan and the way she's standing. What if she's trying to tell us something? Let's see. In the photograph, Susan is standing approximately here. She's pointing at the floor here. Right. But what if she's trying to indicate an area of bricks in the fireplace, and not something in the foreground? The mortar has been chipped away on these bricks. So... Yeah, we don't get a choice. We have to go into Susan's house. And, and this is the end of the case, obviously, since we have our murderer. I'm going to tell you right now, I find this to be the funniest ending. I need one more brick. Where is it? Oh, no, two more bricks. Now we need one more brick. Or was Susan's treasure? <laughs> Pretty sure that's no longer legal tender. <laughs> Whoops! Yeah, that whole hiding the body thing didn't quite work. It looks like Susan had her life savings hidden here. Yeah, and when Morris here burned her body, the heat from the fire must have ignited the bills and burned them right inside the box. My greed made me do this to Susan because I wanted this treasure. But in doing so, I destroyed it instead. It sounds like poetic justice, doesn't it? Yeah, but he's getting real justice too. So yeah, that was Secrets and Ashes. It had a little treasure hunt story in it. I think this and Dudley Catch are the only two without a uh, thing at, with a thing at the end right after we discover who the murderer is, since um, the others kind of ended with the cutscene of the murderer being discovered. So each one has something kind of unique, be it the setting or the situation or the solution or whatever. Secrets and Ashes seem to have the least amount of puzzles, though. I mean, it ended on one, but... 
not a lot of them in that one. Kind of a shame. It would have been cool to have like secret codes and stuff in there. That would have been fun. Oh well, missed opportunities and all that. But next time we will be going to the final curtain, which is a very appropriate name for the last story. And this one is, I think, the biggest of the set. In fact, it's even the biggest book. So this should be fun. So until next time, I will catch you guys later. Bye!